How many seed treatments are on the corn you're going to plant this spring? How many seed treatments will you use on the soybeans you're going to plant this spring? I'll just tell you on our farm, our seed corn has 33 seed treatments on it, and our soybeans, well, we're gonna put 36 seed treatments on those. All right, you might go, oh my goodness, how do you get so many seed treatments on, and why do you need that? Well, the reason why I need it is I want faster emergence, I want a better stand, and ultimately, I want better disease protection and better yield. You absolutely can't start without a seed treatment in corn and soybeans, not if you're going to plant early, not if you're gonna have any kind of negative things or stress that that plant's going to have to tolerate out in the field and it was on display in 2019 once again. Boy, last year we had cold conditions, wet conditions across much of the country and where we had seed treatments on versus untreated, it wasn't even like you're raising the same crop. So the question of do I use a seed treatment or not, that's an easy answer. Absolutely you do. The real question is, which seed treatments am I going to use? There's a lot of different categories here when you think about fungicides and insecticides, even biological products that farmers are using. Yep, those are the three categories. Fungicide, insecticide, biological. When it comes to the biologicals, or as I like to call them, natural products, that's really where I want to start. You think about rhizobia bacteria that soybean farmers have been using for years and years. And let me first say, the rhizobia is so much better today because the scientists have been able to identify the right strains of rhizobia that will actually increase yield more. And how they do that is they can help produce more nitrogen for that plant each year. In addition, there are a lot of other biologicals, or as I like to call them, natural products that are very effective out there, bacteria and fungi especially. So I was talking earlier about all these treatments we have in our corn and our bean seed. Well, the vast majority of those are biologicals or natural products. The bacteria and the fungi, when we have so many of them out there, they aren't necessarily going to work in every single situation. Yes, there are some that will do this, some will do that. We have some that will help with emergence, some that will help with heat stress, others that may help with whatever condition you have. But the point is this. Part of the reason why I like putting so many out there is I figure, hey, if I can get them really inexpensively, and let's say I have 20 or 25 of them on my seed, now I have 20 or 25 chances for higher yield, and all I need is one of those things to hit to pay for my very small expense for what that seed treatment cost. All right, Brian, I know a number of farmers that'll say, well, let's see how those biological things turn out and then I'll maybe consider it later. These are products that have been out for a long time. They aren't just something that, ah, maybe it'll work and we'll just give it a try. It's things that have multi-years of testing. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing that on a large scale. Now, a couple other things here that we had talked about, fungicides, for example. This is an area where we are seeing some changes in the seed industry and thank goodness, we look at metal axle and uh, apron type products that have been out there for, boy, as long as I can remember, probably since I was a kid. That's been all we've been doing for pythium control. And as you can imagine, we're starting to see some tolerance. I don't know if we've got full on resistance yet out in the field, but we're definitely seeing tolerance to that chemistry. We've got a new chemistry for pythium that's just been out for the last few years now called Ethoboxum or Intego. Uh, that's been a real game changer in a lot of fields, especially if you've got wet soils. Pythium is a water mold, and if you've got wet soils, you've got a high likelihood of having that on your seed and seedlings. So putting out some ethoboxum in addition to that metal axle would be a good strategy. Darren mentioned one of the key things here. He said seedlings, and I think a lot of times, especially like in soybeans, where you have the option to treat your beans or not, a lot of people will say, you know what, I'm planting a little later, those beans will pop right out of the ground, seed treatment's not going to do me any good anymore. Uh, yeah, it will, because it stays in that seed for a long time. The benefits of seed treatment usually last for a couple of months. So think about not just the seed, but the young seedling. And think about how often your young seedling struggles with weather conditions, with pathogens in the soil, with insects. And talking about the insects in particular, I guess I would just say there's only one insecticide family. It's the neonic family, neonicotinoid family. That particular family has been under some scrutiny because post-emerge use has been killing some bees. Well, don't use it post-emerge. Just use it as the seed treatment and it's going to be just fine. It's safe to human beings. It's safe for the environment. It works very well, is very systemic, and is really inexpensive. 
Hey Brian, I didn't finish the fungicide discussion. I just kind of talked about one component, but really it's not just one fungicide in these seed treatment mixes. We're oftentimes now seeing three, if not four different fungicide families to try to prevent any resistance and to protect your seed all the way through the season. Here's one other thing that I want to throw out. What are the replant policies and what are the respray policies with the seed treatments you're getting? For example, the seed treatment we're using on soybeans, we do get up to two free resprays for bugs. With the corn seed treatment, and for that matter, even the soybean seed treatment, if we have to replant, we get free seed treatment on there. In some cases, we might get total free replants. So just ask these questions of your seed dealer in advance. And also, just ask your seed dealer, especially on the corn side, what specific seed treatments are coming on that corn? Because if you're only getting two or three seed treatments on there, there are many other companies that are putting 10, 15, 30 seed treatments on and it might be the same cost for the seed. What I'm trying to tell you here is you might be getting very similar genetics from two different companies but if one is putting on many dollars more seed treatment that seed's probably going to be worth more to you net by the end of the year. Yeah the biggest thing to do there Brian is just to ask your seed dealer what's on the seed because there's quite a variance throughout the industry. We've talked a little bit about seed treatments here and they're great for protecting your seed, but to protect your fields from our Weed of the Week, we'll show you what products will work best coming up later in the show.